nothing at all with the thought that Kawhi possibly could come back? No. So if he does, we'll be completely caught off guard. <laughs> Damn, I didn't think of that. We're gonna have to go back upstairs. No, we don't. We do not expect him to play. You know you'll try to send me. Yeah. Are you gonna not reveal it? One minute. I, I'll just call Pop and tell him directly, and then you guys can get it from him. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure nothing. That was practice day, coach. Practice was good. Just ramp it up a little bit. Yeah, we did. Well, we didn't really ramp it up uh, physically, but you know, when the playoffs start, you have a long uh, film session. You have a, uh, an extensive game plan that you go through. You don't do that in the regular season. You don't have time. So we had a good, probably hour meeting um, to discuss the game plan and strategy, and and then a good crisp practice after that. Before the the Orleans game, I think it was you mentioned that you're. Uh, video crew was going to be working overtime because there's yeah. so many variables. You said it with a smile, but I'm guessing there was a lot of truth to it. Do you, do you have what you need from them now? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it just kind of tripled their workload having, to, you know, not knowing who we were going to play. Um, and obviously, we didn't find out until maybe 7.30 last night. So uh, it all uh, it all worked out. And, um, you know, they, they got to do their jobs and, and then we've got to Use what they give us and build a game plan, and so we did. We did that last night. All the coaches were here, uh, pretty late, and uh, good practice today. And quick turnaround. Noon start on Saturday. Steve, Kevin, oh, Kevin just mentioned that you guys may be better for some of the struggles you went through the last month, and, and you sort of referenced that last week. Sure. That, are you sensing that? Um, this, this group learned a lot from going. We learned a lot, yeah, and uh, I think it's. Um, you know, it's every experience that you gain, uh, you can learn from. And, and this has been such a chaotic month with all the injuries and the meaningless games. And, um, you know, we've been frustrated. We haven't uh, performed very well. The good news is we have performed well for four years. And uh, so we know who we are. We know what we're about. And um, we know um, this team well, you know, the Spurs well. So we know what we have to do. Um, now we got to go do it, but the last month is meaningless now. It doesn't, everything starts over. You, you guys have talked about flipping the switch at times this season. Do you feel you've located the switch and are in the process of flipping it, or is it going to soon? It's a lot of switches. Um, switch what it comes down to is how, how well you defend. This league is about defense, uh, especially in the playoffs. Um, so our defense has not been good over the last month. Um, I'm very confident it will be much better. In, in this series. If our defense is better, then we'll be better, and the dimmer will start to go up on that switch. What makes you talk, is it just the fact that it's the postseason, you guys can Yeah, yeah, I mean, and we've done it. You know, this is not a, a brand new team uh, trying to figure it out. We've defended at a high level. This has been a top five defensive team in, this, in the league for the last maybe four or five years. Uh, so, we haven't been the last month, but it's pretty easy for me to tell the real the real us is the one from the last four or five years, not the one from the last four or five weeks. So, uh, been a long grind, long long year, but here we are, and the start of the playoffs uh, gives us a chance to have renewed energy. Well, first of all, that's a misnomer. Pop doesn't like to see me lose. Uh, I like to see him lose. He's he's had way too much success already, and I think sometimes Pop needs to be humbled a little bit. So I'm looking uh, looking to really rub it in and enjoy. If you know, if we were able to beat them, it would just bring me great joy to see the anguish on his face. I hope you hope you heard the sarcasm in my voice. Did you reach out to uh, Nick at all? Try to get any insight. Info? Nick, Nick, and I are uh, we we are um, recusing ourselves um, yeah. from any sort of communication and family uh, uh, interaction for the next couple of weeks. Pop's going to be checking phones, I imagine. Oh yeah, I think they already confiscated Nick's phone. Steve, you often talk about how much you learn from Pop. What did you learn about the playoffs? 
Yeah. Um, well, the first thing I've learned, or I learned from him, is that um, you just keep going. You keep going no matter what. I mean, I, during my, I guess, four seasons there, we won two titles. Uh, we lost in the first round. Uh, we lost in the conference finals. We had injuries. We had good health. We had everything in between. Uh, you just keep going. You take whatever is in front of you and um, you embrace it. And you let everybody else, um, media, fans, um, write about it, talk about it. Um, one of the reasons uh, we're able to live these great lives is um, what we do is really popular. And so we're going to be criticized. We're going to be judged. We're going to be celebrated. Um, and everything in between. And I think that was probably the best les lesson I learned from Pop. Uh, the only thing that matters is just uh, in our locker room. And uh, these are our circumstances. Uh, they are what they are. Let's do our best. And uh, if we lose or whatever, you just go and you have a glass of wine and you move on and you try again the next year. Your earlier sarcasm aside, is it still awkward facing him? You have obviously many times. I, uh, I, 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 yeah, I mean, remove the sarcasm. I want. Um, I want Pop to win against anybody else. I mean, we're that close. He's uh, he's my mentor, um, and uh, he's somebody I, I feel incredibly strongly about in terms of just who he is and what he did for me in my life and um, what he's doing for my son right now. And um, so I want Pop to win um, against anybody else. Why, why did he make such an impact on you? Uh, he's just a... Um, an incredibly sharp, uh, compassionate, um, fearless human being. Um, it, it shines through not only in his coaching, but in the way he approaches life. And, and um, he just, he made a big impact on me. And, and it was interesting. I really didn't even play that much for him. You know, I did not have a good run with the Spurs. I had a handful of good games, but, you know, it was not really a successful uh four years, four seasons for me. Most of the time I was on the bench and it didn't really pan out, um, but it was an amazing experience. And um, you know, I look back to Chicago and learning from, from Phil Jackson, playing with those teams and, and San Antonio. You know, the influence that Phil and Pop have had on me is just profound and uh, not only helped establish uh, how I coach, but uh, helped, um, helped me in terms of how I look at the world and and, um, and relationships and everything else. It's um, I, I'm incredibly lucky to have had those guys in my life. Steve, do you still anticipate Curry will miss the entire first round, or could he return late in the series if you need it? Oh, I doubt. Like I said, whenever that was, um, I don't know, three weeks ago. Um, I don't. I don't expect him. I guess we reevaluate re on Saturday, but. Can you follow up on that and just uh, how does it feel for you going into the playoffs with us, uh, playing with this team, and you know, how is he looking and whatever he's doing at practice? Well, it's what, you know, it's what I just mentioned um, that uh, I took from my San Antonio days. Stuff happens. You know, we went into a uh, one year without Tim Duncan. We went into the playoffs. Uh, another year we had we lost uh, our starting two guard, Derek Anderson, like first game of, of a series. Um, you know, you, you you just don't know what's coming, and so you just prepare and you do do your best and you fight and you stay together, and then um, you just take it. You know, you take the take the wins, you take the losses, you enjoy the wins, you uh, you know you lament the losses, and life goes on, and you keep going. Is Steph involved in the game planning, or is he talking during practice? He's stuff? he's part of the meeting up there, and and he's been great. His voice has been good for his teammates. Uh, more so sharing things uh, sort of behind the scenes with guys, but uh, his voice is always important for us. Do you still, do you still expect Andre back for game one? Awesome? Yeah, I expect Andre to play. Yeah, he took part in practice today. I saw Patrick was here. It was nice to have him around yeah. the team. Yeah, and... good to have Patrick. Um, don't expect Patrick um, to play. You guys know that, uh, but it was great to have him here. With, with Andre, obviously, this is a guy who, who knows when he needs to turn it on. He's kind of been looking forward yeah. to these playoffs for a while. How integral is he to what makes you guys you guys when it comes to playoff time? He's uh, you know, one of our glue guys, um, one of the smartest players I've ever been around at both ends of the floor. Um, he ties things together. You know, He uh, closes up uh, some holes. He uh, fills in the blanks, however you want to put it. Yeah. 
he's just a brilliant, brilliant basketball mind, and 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 he just helps everybody else play better. Steve, you, you joked last week about all the uh, coaching staff trying to guess who you were going to play. Did anybody end up guessing it correctly? <laughs> you had the Spurs in the pool. Yeah, exactly. We didn't we didn't have a pool, but, but uh, I mean, we just uh, we just sat up there last night and. I think, you know, as the games unfolded last night, it just, it looked from the beginning like it was going to be Spurs. And then, um, obviously, Denver made a hell of a comeback. And uh, so it literally went down into into overtime. And uh, But it, it just, it was nice just to, you know, get clarity and start preparations. What did you think of the schedule? Saturday early game, quick turn on Monday night, long trip to San Antonio. Yeah, well, the one, the one bright spot with the San Antonio trip is that it's a day game on the, on game four, so we can fly back and get home at a decent hour. You know, one thing I don't love is if you're in the central time zone, you have an 8.30 start or something. Um, now you've got a way, do we spend the night or fly back? And there's always kind of that point of, you know, whether it's 2 a.m. or 3 a.m., like, you know, at some point you just don't want to fly back that night. And there's nothing worse than staying in a city after the series or after a game is over. And it's going to shift to another. Series. You just want to get out of there. So I like the fact that game four is a day game. We can get home. Do you not like Saturday noon? I know you're it's not ideal, uh, but you know both teams have to do it. I know we did it against New Orleans a couple of years ago. Did we do it last year too? Or? Sunday. Hmm. Sunday last year. Sunday. Sunday. Yeah, two and three. Yeah. So we're you know, it is what it is. You just play. Yeah, I think Kevin just has an innate feel for what needs to be done on the floor, and it's one of the things that makes him so unique. You know, very few superstar players uh, could go to a different team and and just not worry about how many times the ball is in his hands or how many shots he gets. But when Steph is healthy, Kevin frequently plays off the ball, he might get seven or eight shots in a game. He's perfectly content with that, and then. Steph gets hurt, and all of a sudden, you know, KD's, he recognizes what we need, and, you know, he's shooting 30 times or whatever. So he's, he's a smart player. He just knows what, what we need. Steve, what do you need to think is the, is it for a star to tell his guys, even younger players, hey, if I make a mistake, like, hold me accountable or anything? Well, that's what you hope from, you know, the, the older guys. So you want them to be mentors uh, to the younger guys. And, you know, one of my favorite um, – dynamics in basketball was uh, when I was in Phoenix uh, I used to watch Steve Nash um, he'd make a perfect pass to a guy you know a guy would fumble it out of bounds and Steve would go it's my fault horrible pass. My, my fault my fault when you, you get your older guys just you know taking criticism taking blame you know trying to pump everybody else up um, I think that's great and um, it's a strong dynamic for a team and I I see that with uh, with with KD Steph, you know they know how good they are, and and so they're they're willing to sort of take whatever's coming. Steve, with the injuries and struggling down the stretch, does this postseason feel like a bigger challenge to this team than the previous three, or are they all? It's just different. Them? It's just different. Um, you know, last year um, everything was so smooth. Once KD came back from the injury late in the season. Once we had him back, it just felt like uh, it was perfect. You know, 16 and one. Nobody's ever done that before. Um, but every year's different. Um, first two years were dramatically different, um, and so will this year be. So, um, you know, we we are going in to the playoffs with the idea that uh, we're we're going to accept every challenge and we're going for it and. Uh, our intention is to hang another banner. That's our goal. That's that's what we think is going to happen. Um, we're confident of that. And if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. But you go for it. A few weeks, a few months ago, I don't think anyone would have expected that Quinn Cook would have been your presumably yeah. starting point guard. What has he done over the last few weeks with the opportunity that he's had that's built up your confidence in him? That he well, can we, rise we need a scoring, you know. Uh, we, as you know, we have a top-heavy team scoring-wise. So without Steph, 
um, you know, we become, um, you know, even more top heavy with Clay and KD. So Quinn's just been great in terms of providing that extra three point shooting, not only off the ball, but on the ball. Um, and he's, as I've said many times, he's, he's such a pro, he gets it, guys love him. Um, and I'm thrilled for him that uh, he has seized this opportunity and signed on for next year as well. It's a great story. It seems as if he's almost playing more of a Curry-esque role in these last few weeks, trying to provide some more spacing, a little bit more gravity. No one's Steph, but uh, did you see that, that that ability in him when he wasn't in this role? Well, that's yeah, that's why he has been in this role over the last few weeks because it is very similar. He can play on or off the ball, and uh, and Steph has been in his ear as well, yeah. you know, sharing thoughts with him and strategic ideas, and so it's been a really good. Uh, Dynamic. Do you have any idea why the Stanley Cup is here? <laughs> no, no clue. No clue. <laughs> Ask Raymond. Raymond, Raymond will know. <laughs> they take it on a little promotional tour every year during the beginning of the playoffs. So it's going like five or six different places after the year. So. Finishes in San Jose. Well, I want to get our names etched onto the Larry O'Brien trophy, but there's not that much room on it. So. You win it four times in a row. I think that's your right now. Is that you right? Own it. Is that right? <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Thanks a lot.